parents say uh, talking with teenagers can present some unique challenges, whether it's connecting emotionally or understanding their stresses. Having conversations can sometimes be tough. So here to guide us through that process is Lindsay Gravemeyer. She's the program manager with Goodwill Industries of Central Illinois. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, so, Lindsay, you know, why is it so difficult to essentially just talk with teens? Sure. You know, I think there's a lot of factors that go into that. Teens just don't have the best reputation for being calm, cool, logical beings. Not all of that bad reputation is deserved, but between hormones and trying to figure out their freedom, you know, there's a reason why they have that label as well. Secondly, when you're talking with teens, it's no longer topics like a favorite toy or refusing to take a nap like little kids. Teens are encountering really tricky issues that have real consequences, and parents have strong feelings and concerns about how their teen is going to navigate them. And then, too, the relationship between a parent and a child is just naturally going through some changes, and both are trying to adjust to that new normal. So parents may be asking, you know, how exactly is this relationship changing? And, you know, they're still my kid, right? So what's the answer to those questions? Sure. Well, I brought in some additional experts to kind of help with this one. So this is a book I really love um, called The Grown-Up's Guide to Teenage Humans by Josh Shipp, um, who describes it, I think, in a really good way. With little kids, parents are like an air traffic controller. It's all about safety. Nobody takes off. Nobody lands without my permission, right? And that's great for, for young children. But with teens, we need to be preparing them to be out on their own and make decisions without us there. So this is a little more like a coach and a player out on the field. You need to be able to give them directions and advice that are going to help them make those split second decisions when you're not right there with them. Um, he describes it as a balance between do as I say, so strictly controlling everything, and do what you want, completely hands off parenting. And that sounds like an extremely tough balance. So, you know, what are some ways that parents can be more of a coach while talking with their teen? Yeah, so I brought another book that's really great if you're looking for some help. It's called How to Talk So Teens Will Listen and Listen So Teens Will Talk. And it gives a ton of great advice. But a few things that I like to kind of pick out from it is one, really surprisingly, you can avoid eye contact. Like we're taught to always make eye contact, but if you're having a really awkward or serious or confrontational discussion with a teen, often it's better if you guys are involved in doing something else. So going for a drive or taking a walk or cooking dinner because it takes some of the emotional pressure off, but the message is still getting through. Um, second, while you're listening as your teen's talking, it's really difficult sometimes to not interject. Um, you know, especially if they're whining or complaining or describing this plan that you know is going to end in disaster. But every time we react emotionally and jump in with a judgment, like that's a horrible idea, we've just effectively ended that conversation and our teen becomes less likely to open up to us in the future. So challenge yourself to to just listen until they're done and add in that occasional like hmm or neutral question to keep them going once they've shared you can acknowledge their feelings even if you don't agree so statements like i can tell you're really frustrated about this show that you're listening but not necessarily agreeing with them and you can do that as well you can share your own feelings saying you know i admit i felt really concerned about your future when you said you were failing math because they can't argue with what you feel either. And last, once you've kind of started this conversation going, it's a chance to problem solve together. So once you've listened to their point of view, instead of jumping in and saying, here's what you need to do, you can identify whatever's a non-negotiable family rule or structure. So, you know, in our family, you have to be home by 10, but then work together. So how, how are some ways that we can support you in doing that? And that's going to strengthen their problem solving skills and help them have more buy in to whatever solution you come up with. Lindsay, that is absolutely great advice. Thank you so much for joining us here on Central Illinois News Day this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. We'll be right back with more. Stick around.